glamping. This luxury camping experience has definitely become a buzzword in the short-term rental community, even more so with Airbnb's recent push towards more unique stays for vacation rental guests. The idea of expanding our short-term rental portfolio with glamp sites is something that we've been seriously considering for some time now, especially since we purchased this 77-acre parcel of high desert land and found out that it's zoned for campgrounds. But one thing has been holding us back from researching it further. We've never been glamping. What's up, guys? I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie. And we have spent the last two nights here in this geodesic dome in Idlewild, California. Yeah, this glamping spot is hosted by Lisa and Ryan. This geodome has fully lived up to the glamping name. It is definitely an elevated camping experience. On the back patio, there's a barbecue with a side burner, so we cooked eggs in the morning. There's also a sink with pots and pans and dinnerware underneath. And they've got an outdoor shower with hot water. And it's a little instant hot water heater connected up to a portable propane tank. Yeah, that's the first thing that Stephen did when we got here was walk around and try and figure out how everything was working. Typical. They've also got this composting toilet, which uh, we weren't really sure how that was going to be. I was a little bit nervous about that part, to be honest, but it's been fine. And inside there's a queen bed, which was super comfortable, and then this big window looking out towards all the trees. So we decided to plan this trip for a couple different reasons. The first and biggest one was that we've been considering adding some glamping sites to our 77 acre parcel that we purchased a few months ago. Either glamping or some other kind of alternative structure. If you missed our video on that project, then it's a good one to check out after this video. But I suppose now is probably a good time to give an update on our mountain house. We haven't named it yet. Still. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty sure in that video that we said that we would be up and running by the 4th of July. And unfortunately that hasn't happened. We've just had a lot of things that have kind of come up and we've had to prioritize in front of that. Summertime is usually our slow period, so we thought that this would be a great time to get that property up and running. But we ended up having a couple of new client onboardings and a couple of back-to-back -back setup projects that just soaked up all of our time. I was able to sneak away, you know, for a day or part of a day, once a week or something. And so I was just never really able to spend a meaningful amount of time up there in the last couple of months. I did get pretty much all the painting done, but we decided to outsource. There's a little bit of interior painting and exterior painting. We just decided to outsource the rest of these projects to help speed things up so we can get the listing online. Yeah. So Steven mentioned the painter is also going to do the exterior. We've had a couple of issues with leaking and also the paint's just looking a little bit dull. So we think that a fresh coat of paint on the whole exterior of the house is really going to make it look nice. We also decided to hire out some of the electrical work. Right now in the whole house, it has gray outlets. He's going to switch everything over to white and maybe also hang some light fixtures, which will just save my time. Basically, we were just looking at money leaving our bank account every month to pay the mortgage with no rental income coming in to offset that. It gets a little bit painful to see that after a while. So we just figured if we have to spend a little bit more money up front to just get this place up and running and cash flowing, then that's just what we have to do. It's kind of a classic thing with us where we take on a DIY project and in hindsight, our time is really better spent somewhere else. That's our tragic flaw, but at least we recognize it. We recognize it most of the time after the fact. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, here we are. Okay, so back to the glamping project. Step one is going to be getting the main house online and up and running and rented. And then step two is going to be looking into whether or not we can add glamping sites to our property. So we knew when we bought the project that glamping was never a guaranteed thing. There's a lot of hurdles that we have to jump through with permitting. There's some road usage concerns and some other factors that just might stop the project dead in its tracks. We know for sure we can build one additional structure on the property due to California's ADU laws or accessory dwelling unit laws. And because of the square footage or the acreage of the lot, that additional structure can be one and a half times the size of the main house. So this could be a pretty big additional house we know we can build. So when we were thinking about putting an offer on this house, we had to decide if it would still be worth it to us with our financial goals, with our personal goals, if we were to only ever add one additional structure to the property. So if on those 77 acres, we could only have the existing house plus one additional house that we could build. And really when we thought about it and when we ran the numbers, we were happy with just the one house on it. We think that it's going to do really well for us. So it was a no brainer and we decided to make an offer on the house and we got the house. With the uniqueness of the property, we're happy with just the one house, like Kylie said, but if we can, you know, do additional things like glamping, then we're really into that as well. We've started to do a little bit of research and digging into glamping and adding a glamp site, but we realized that we've never actually been glamping before. We've done traditional tent camping, maybe like, I don't know, 10 years ago. 
or something like that. Yeah. yeah, so we looked around online. It's really loud. Pretty windy. I guess domes are good for uh, withstanding it's solid. elements. It's <laughs> solid, though. It, yeah. like, this thing you, isn't moving. No. We got all this stuff blow around over there. <laughs> All right, so I don't think we're going to blow away. Um, <laughs> so that was a very long explanation about the first reason why we booked this trip. But the second reason is that Stephen wanted to take our new truck for a road trip. A couple of weeks ago, we got the Rivian R1T. We've been on the waiting list for that truck for about a year and a half. We traded in our Toyota Tundra for this Rivian. So far, we really love it. It's a great truck, got a lot of cool features, tons of storage, innovative thoughts about storage, which we appreciate. It's got a front trunk and it's got this gear tunnel behind the seats. It's also all electric and we definitely don't miss paying for the gas bills for that Tundra. Yep. Steven's been geeking out over this truck for like the last year and telling me all about it and showing me YouTube videos about it. but. I I wasn't like super into it until it came and now I think I've driven it more than he has. Yeah, so. It's really cool. So the third reason why we wanted to take this trip is we were just ready for a break. We took a couple of family trips this summer, but if you've ever traveled with a five-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, then you know that it's not really a vacation, at least not a quiet and peaceful one. Yeah, so this last two nights has just been us, and it's been really nice. Us and the squirrels. The squirrels. A lot of squirrels here There's in these so many squirrels here. And the fourth reason is we figured we had to go to the wilderness to test this SpaceX Starlink <laughs> internet system that I bought a couple months ago. I don't know why you bought this thing. I think it's just a cool toy for him, but... You know, it's a cool, like, little gadget to, to have around. You never know when you might need it. Another thing is, I'm going on this trip in a couple of weeks where I know for sure there'll be no service. Being able to still remain connected to, you know, our business and talk with Kylie about how things Help me troubleshoot mechanical issues that always come up when sort he leaves town. <laughs> sort of the remote handyman. So the Starlink will be helpful with that. Hopefully. Um, yeah. One of the things we found here is it doesn't do well under heavy tree cover. I knew that, you know, I, I read reports that you aren't going to get optimal signal under tree cover. We just didn't know how bad it was going to be. And I guess with big pine trees around, it's it's not good. Um, it worked, but and it was passable. No, I wouldn't but, say it worked. Well, it was passable. It was not reliable. It was, it was passable for like internet browsing, doing internet things. But we like tried to FaceTime kids and it didn't really work for that because it was like, cut in and out but anyway if you get a starlink keep it out in the open sky but being unplugged or a little bit unplugged i mean we still have to look at our airbnb messages and guest messages but being a little bit unplugged here has been nice it's been super peaceful and relaxing the wind just picked up this morning before today it's, it's been just calm, calm. it's like literally no wind at all and the geodome is really comfortable i was telling steven yesterday i wish that we could like plop one of these in our backyard and make it our office or something. I just love having the big window and you feel like you're outside, but also kind of shaded and it's nice. While we were here, we did a bit of hiking and then we also prepared meals on the grill here, worked well, and we visited a couple of restaurants in town. One perk about bringing the Rivian is we did use the electricity from the truck to kind of take our glamping experience up a notch, like making fresh coffee in the morning. Steven had the idea of bringing our coffee maker from home. And at first I was like, why is he suggesting this? He does not drink coffee. And then like, you know, the light bulb clicked in my head. Oh, he just wants to play with his new toy. Yeah. <laughs> cool function of the truck you can power anything i'm not complaining it's been really nice to have have a latte in the morning glamping calls for a latte right yeah it's been fun here the deck out here is great peaceful and we spend a lot of time just kind of chilling, chilling. <laughs> We did also spend a little bit of time sort of casually planning and goal setting personal and family goals and also brainstorming YouTube content and stuff for our other social media channels. Yeah, you can expect to see more content from us on Instagram. and In the coming weeks. Yeah, the planning that we did is because we didn't really just want that to be a regurgitation of our YouTube. Outside of hosting and property management, we're also working on renovating our personal home. And in those renovations, a lot of it's been DIY projects, mostly Steven, but I've done some as well. So we're excited to share more about that. And also the setup of our property on the 77 acres and maybe adding in glamping, lifestyle, DIY, plus a little bit of hosting and managing thrown in the mix. So if that's something that interests you, then maybe go give us a follow. We'll link our account in the description below. All right. Well, well, check out here is at 10 a.m. and we aren't going to be those guests that just stay late. So we got to get. And we have to outrun this fire. We got to go. The fire and the hurricane and whatever else comes. So we're out. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.